right, guys. So I'm assuming you're all here for the So You Want to Make It Online panel, right? Yeah. Okay, so rule number one about doing anything online is use every opportunity you've got. So I'm a YouTuber, so I make videos. So if everybody could cheer really loud for me, that'd be awesome. I don't know why you're all here, I'm not going to lie. Uh, okay. So thanks for coming out. Uh, basically, the idea of So You Want to Make It Online is so you guys can hear the perspective of trying to make it online from somebody who hasn't actually quite made it yet. Uh, example, I'm Joey Baggins. I have a YouTube channel where I talk about nerdy stuff. Uh, basically, that's about it. I'm just a total nerd. And sometimes I do like vlogs and stuff like that. And I've only got about 300 subscribers. And that's in the span of a year. So it's not like it happens quick. And there's Dr. Holocaust himself. Uh-oh. Yay! Yay! Everybody cheer, damn it. Hey guys, and uh, I'm doing from the cosplay side over here. So, Obsessed Panda on YouTube. Been cosplaying for, well, since I was 13 or so, 21 now, if you do the math. I don't know math, so you guys can do that. Um, yeah, so I uh, just recently started up the Facebook cosplay stuff, which I don't know if you're, who's into cosplay here, but you know, Facebook cosplay pages, there you go. Facebook cosplay pages, you want those likes. So that's what I started doing. And I had a little competition with myself to see how many likes I can get before Con Bravo. Almost made it to 500, so it's pretty good. <laughs> and then uh, our other guest here. Hello. Hi. Hi, good. <laughs> Uh, yes, um, my name is Connell Macbeth, I am more aptly known through the nerd community and at conventions as Toronto's greatest supervillain and evil genius, Dr. Holocaust. I do YouTube things, and the YouTube things have bled into convention- well, actually, I started doing just convention cosplay stuff, which bled onto YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and other things I don't like dealing with. <laughs> but Social media, guys! Social media, everybody! Oh my gosh! Um, so yes. That is about me. Is there anything else I'm supposed to talk about? Or? Not quite yet. I'm okay. going to lead into it. All right. Uh, so, like I said, the panel is basically for those of you who want to try to make it online. Maybe you're thinking about doing a YouTube channel. Maybe you're thinking about doing a cosplay page, uh, writing a blog, DeviantArt. I don't know. So it's basically just to kind of give you guys some pointers from somebody who, or people who have been doing this for quite a long time and don't, like, we're not exactly PewDiePie. If you know what I'm saying. So, you don't make 7 million? No. I'm some kid from Hamilton. Just 6. I wish. Just 6. Yeah. 6.9. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. We're on our way. Uh, so, uh, basically, I'm just like, I, I kind of asked these two to join me just to kind of give some advice, because I know uh, basically all of Con Bravo have been attending like a ton of different panels from other people, like including Doc himself. Just giving advice to people like you guys, but sometimes it's guys like uh, The Completionist who actually did a freaking awesome YouTube panel. Uh, but it's not, ex like, it's relatable in the sense that they do remember what it's like, but we're living it, so we can tell you straight up. And uh, basically, I can tell you guys right now, if you're gonna do YouTube, you're going to want to get good equipment, and I know nobody really wants to hear that. <laughs> no, it, yeah, I know. I'm like, yeah. you guys can boo or whatever. To or you the, can just stay silent. Well, to, <laughs> a, to a point, um, one of the biggest tips I hear from people and that I can definitely agree with is if you're going to get good equipment, or where you should start when getting equipment for doing stuff on YouTube or doing any kind of video media, is start with a microphone. It is much easier to offend your viewers' ears than it is to offend their eyes. If you have, like, terrible grainy quality on your videos, but your sound is nice and crisp and well-leveled, people will still watch your stuff. Um, but if you have, like, beautiful visuals, but your sound is garbage, people will watch your stuff for maybe five minutes, absolute maximum, before they change the channel and watch something else. Exactly. There's, uh, I don't know how many of you guys know, but there's a guy called, uh, Ozzy Man Reviews, and he does mostly just audio. Like, honestly, nine times out of ten, maybe some of the people you guys watch uh, probably just do mostly audio reviews or just audio stuff, podcasts even. Uh, so, yeah, like Doc said, it's mostly just audio. If, when you're starting out, I'm not saying like, go out and get all the best equipment or you'll fail! Like, I'm just saying, like, it's, you kind of want to start off, like, you want to start off on the right foot. Well, 
I mean, there is a, there's a couple of examples that I've seen where equipment is good, but it will not make or break your content. Uh, there was, I don't know if you guys are around for this, folks that are on YouTube, but there was suddenly this guy who had ads randomly showing up all over, like, Philip DeFranco and Freddie Wong and stuff like that. This weird middle-aged bald guy um, that nobody really knew what the heck he was on about, but he had extremely top quality like visuals and sound and he had a impeccable set built to look like the basement of his parents house so that he could do this filming and stuff and I'm watching it and I'm like god this guy's got like triple-a equipment he's got insane amounts of money if he paid YouTube to have ads come up on the bottoms and on the side of all of these things that were like a bright fluorescent green with his face like over top of it, and it was like Philip DeFranco, I am your father, or something like that written on it. Because you look at that and you go, what the fuck? And you click on it. And this guy had impeccable equipment, but his content was garbage. He just made a bunch of really dry, really awkward jokes. Um, a lot of the jokes overstayed their welcome and didn't make any sense. Like, I was really, like, I, I watched a few of his videos really trying to get a grasp of what it was that he was doing, and I couldn't do it. Uh, whereas, God, who's that guy with, like, the fantastic ADD? What's his name? Oh, um... I'm gonna see if you can get who I'm talking about just on that. <laughs> I know, I'm like, uh... Fred? <laughs> like, I was trying to think. Uh, the, he does, like, a whole bunch of videos just on his phone. Um... Toby Buskis. Toby, yeah. yeah. Toby Turner. Tobuskis. Uh, yeah, he has, like, ADD of the wazoo. Yeah. Uh, and here's the thing. A lot of his videos that get the most views is just shit he did on his phone. And people watch it because his content is fun, it's fast, it's poppy, and... They love it because he's having fun, and he's got so much energy, and the, he doesn't talk about almost anything. He's just on his wheelies going down the street randomly pointing his camera at things, like, this person's got flowers, oh my god, that's great, blah, 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 blah. and he's running around, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> this guy is on the best cocaine. Like, <laughs> it's so fantastic, but his qualities, like, the video quality is just whatever was on his phone, the audio quality is whatever is on his phone but the content is good enough that he can sell it just on that. So if you're trying to do stuff like having a good microphone and a decent camcorder, having nice editing software, and then like half a decent place to, to shoot like with good lighting and all that kind of stuff will help. But like I said, with that one guy, good equipment and stuff will not save you if the content that you're trying to get across to your audience isn't something worth watching. Sorry, I got rambled about that. <laughs> I hate that guy. <laughs> I mean, if you're doing anything cosplay-wise, uh, I mean, your visuals and you're not going to have any audio, but your visuals are all going to come from the photographers you work with. So, I mean, if you're just starting out, if you have like a friend who has a nice-ass camera, you know, hit them up. Uh, but after that, I mean, when you're at convention stuff, there are so many super talented people who are going to come to conventions and who are going to want to shoot with you and who you can set up shoots with if you want to do that. Um, and that's probably the best way to do it in that sense because no, I mean, no one is going to see you. Unless, I mean, a lot of cosplayers will do uh, YouTube stuff or they'll do, you know, they'll do uh, like Periscope on Twitch or, or Twitter, sorry, and stuff like that. But, I mean, you are going to get known by walking around conventions and, you know, hanging out with people, but also your photos. That's going to kind of be what you're going to see the most. Uh, so, I mean, in terms of photo shoots and stuff like that, just, uh, you know, setting that kind of stuff up, not being afraid. Your, uh, the content that you're going to produce in terms of the photos, you will work with someone, so you will have some, you will have someone to have your back there. It won't all be, you don't, you don't have to. Uh, do it all on yourself. Do it all alone. But in terms of that, uh, you got to you got to search out people for that. So uh, when you're doing that, have fun with your photographers and that sort of thing. And then you need a place to put them. So have a blog. Have a Facebook page, whatever you're doing there. And then from that, you can also add video into that too. Uh, a lot of the times, uh, cosplayers, you may not need as much of a setup. Uh, if you're having a Facebook page, you want to do updates, let your uh, let people know what cons you're going to. You can tweet it. It's pretty basic, mm -hmm. but it's a good time. And uh, if you're doing that there, that's how you're going to kind of start that way. So it's comparative to the YouTube stuff. It all ends up being the same, um, but you just have to have fun with it. And there's an interesting note on that. Um, fun fact, I hate Twitter. I hate it. Um, and some people were like, no, but you gotta have a Twitter account for the character, you gotta have a Facebook page for the character so that you can contact people and it'll be easier for people that enjoy your content to follow your content. And I was like, I hate Twitter. Twitter's for people that want to like talk a short sentence about the poop they just had. And I don't want 
poop messages on my board. Like, I don't want to follow people on Twitter because I don't want to hear the short sentences about people's lives. That bothers me. I've got too much going on. I don't want to read these things. They're useless. And there was like, no, but here's the thing. This is a way to share social media in a way that your followers, people that enjoy consuming your content, can easily get a hold of you. Because if I'm just updating, say, on, on only on YouTube, um, and there's an analytics thing that you can click on that'll actually tell you like where your views are coming from, which part of your videos people are watching, what part of the world they're from, like their gender and age gap and stuff like that. Uh, and one of the things was, it's like, yeah, if you're just watching just from YouTube, then your viewers are going to be people who regularly visit YouTube only. Unless you start using those little buttons on the side when you're uploading your stuff that's like, oh, I also want to link my account to Twitter and to Facebook and to Twitch and to the Tumblr and uh, Imgur and a bunch of other things. So that people who are walking around who say uh, are following you on Twitter, they can be walking around at work or something like that, and then they get a little update on their phone that says, oh, by the way, so-and-so just posted some content. They don't have to wait until the next time they're looking through YouTube in order to see your video. They got notified that it's there. And there's a million other things you'd be getting up to. Like, I live tweet a whole bunch of crap when I'm at cons. I take pictures with people that I think have really cool costumes, and I post them. And uh, when I get up to shenanigans like uh, getting arrested on a train for being dressed up, uh, <laughs> I, I tweet it. <laughs> like, it's, it's stuff that you can share that's not just your primary content. Like, people that enjoy the stuff that you're making will, odds are, also enjoy the small nuances of your everyday life, maybe. And sharing that with people is a really great way to get in touch with your fans. Uh, I think for cosplayers, uh, Instagram is a big thing now too. Because, I mean, you are portraying a character, whoever you're portraying, uh, but Instagram accounts are really big. Because so, you can post actual photos, and people are going to see them, you know, check it out. But you can also post like really hilarious photos of you in your costume and stuff. And people totally get a sense of who you are. And then you have friends, and you comment, you do a bunch of emoticons, everybody's happy. Like, it's a good time. Yeah, emojis. <laughs> Who doesn't have emojis? Um, so... <laughs> Doc, please, I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> um, actually, if I could, like, kind of springboard off that, is, um, not a YouTuber, but, uh, Stephen Amell. Uh, he's an actor. By all rights, he should be kind of, like, unattainable, and you shouldn't really be able to relate to the guy. He posts on Facebook all the time. Like, you literally know him as a person. You care more about him, you want to see more of his work. I don't care about the WWE at all. He's wrestling in the WWE on a pay-per-view, and I'm going to watch it, because I care about the guy. He's like a mom who like, constantly like, shares different like, links that you don't want to see on Facebook. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah, you're trying. It's adorable. Uh, George Takei. George, yeah. 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 Uh, Markiplier is a great example of someone who's actually like in our field. Who He's constantly talking to fans all the time, and Markiplier's fans like genuinely care. Like, I genuinely, like, when he got sick, I cried! Like, I was in such agony! Oh, you're a big baby. I, oh, I cried. <laughs> like, it, you, you want, like, especially here, like, with all of you, you gotta keep in mind, like, all of us, were not PewDiePie, so we're really close to our, like, people who watch our stuff, like, we're close to quote-unquote fans. We love you guys. So, that can get hazy as you get bigger, and it's one of the things Gerard was talking about at the YouTube panel, was Sometimes you kind of lose sight of that, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I truly hope that that never happens to me or you guys or anybody. You guys. I've actually seen that happen to someone. I've seen a fan in YouTube No, it's not. No, it's horrible. Because it turns someone that you used to like into kind of a monster. Yeah. Yes. Well, here's the thing human beings, psychologically, humans weren't built for this. Weren't built to be paid attention to as much as that, or worshipped in that sense. Uh, and it twists people, unless you're extremely careful. And like, even people that are extremely careful, they don't make it out of that. That's rough. <laughs> uh, it's a big thing with cosplay too. Some cosplayers are competitive as hell. And if, if you're cosplaying the same thing, <laughs> that, the people are like, oh. <laughs> if, uh, it, you know, it, you don't have to be like that. If you want to be like that, you can be like that, but sometimes it's just intense. Obviously, you want to critique people's work and give them like, in terms of craftsmanship and stuff. If you're competing in a masquerade or anything like that, that it, it, is, going, it is going to come into play your skill level. But yeah, it'll be constructive in that sense. Um, so, you know, uh, if you're doing a masquerade. But if you're walking around and, uh, you know, 
or if, if you think that you're m may, way more popular than someone else who's doing your character, it can get a little intense because you don't own any of these characters. Um, we all love them. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> But you don't, own, you know, you don't own any of these characters. We all, you know, we all like the same anime. We all like the same books, you know, stuff like that. So you have to kind of just, you know, appreciate that if a more famous cosplayer or whatever does the same costume as you, just to like be like, sweet, we all like the same thing. It's pretty cool. And you know, in terms of that, um, a lot of the times, if something's really popular, like uh, let's say. When the uh, Avengers, uh, the new Avengers movie came out, I did a Black Widow cosplay, and I wore it out to Anime North, and uh, it was massively popular because it had just come out. And people were stopping me all over the place, and it was awesome. And then there were there were other Black Widows who were there too and stuff, and I had people straight up be like, "Oh, I saw like some ugly Black Widow, or whatever," and I was like, "Nah, man." <laughs> <laughs> Bro, don't be like that. <laughs> like I gotta stand up for my my other Natasha, so. Uh so another thing too, if you guys have like a question or you have something to say, just raise your hand. We'll we'll grab you. Uh, oh, you use. Oh. Yeah. I I was just wondering, um, what about content where it's not necessarily you being shown like on the video, like something like Minute Physics or something, where you're you're illustrating something or or doing something, you know, through. I want to say Photoshop, but that's not the software. Uh, oh, and things like that. Like After Effects and stuff. Is, pros and cons to that sort of approach? Yeah, um, okay, in terms of cosplayers, I know a lot of cosplayers like to post progress pictures of their work. So they're not necessarily in their costumes, um, but they're just kind of showcasing their um, their skill. So in terms of their sewing skill, in terms of their craftsmanship with their props and stuff like that. Um, so when they're showcasing that kind of stuff, I think the important thing is a lot of people will, um, if you're posting that on your me on your social media, whatever you're doing, a lot of people might go straight at you and be like, oh, that prop looks like hell. Like, because it's not finished or whatever. And I think the uh, the pro of showing work that is in, pro uh, the con that is of showing work that is in progress is that people are not going to see your finished, uh, your finished work and they probably are going to immediately criticize you. Um, but if you're, um, I mean, if you're doing artwork and stuff like that, you got to keep in mind that your finished product, you know if you put your heart into it, it's going to look, you know, you, ho you hope that it's going to look good. And then you're going to showcase that to people who uh, who like it as well. Actually, funny thing. Um, a note on having your costumes and your content and stuff like that be of a certain quality, especially when it comes to cosplay. Before I was doing Dr. Holocaust and I started going to conventions, I was doing a cardboard transformer um, that I just made up called Boxticon that transforms into a cardboard box. And it was, I literally just wore a cardboard box and I put another box on my head and more boxes on my hands and just walked around the con and was like, meet more, I'm a robot. Um, and a lot of people were like, that's fucking dumb. Get out of here. Leave the convention. Like, people were telling me to leave the convention. And I had, like, a camera guy with me and we were walking around interviewing people, just like, you know, how are you doing at the con? Are you enjoying yourself? Who are you dressed up as? Do you know who I'm dressed up as? Um, which was a huge amount of fun. But some people got really shitty. Uh, and that's really unfortunate because I just kept coming back with like another so, like at the end of the con I would always throw the costume away and then make another one the next like the <laughs> night before the next year at Fan Expo And at Fan Expo like four years doing the same thing. It's like yeah, let's make another box thing. Why not? Um, and that's the thing as long as you're having fun With what you're doing that is the absolute core of everything that you're going to be doing, be it making videos for, for YouTube, or music, or podcasts, or costumes, or anything like that, don't do this if your goal is ultimately to get really popular and get a lot of like clicks and get those clicks on the internet, like, no. Do this because you love it. Because if no one ever watched your shit, if no one ever enjoyed your costume, you still had fun. That's why you do this. That will actually, like, that feeling that you have when you're doing that, that's infectious. Because despite the fact that people were really shitty when I was walking around as a box, by the time I came back, like, my third year, I think, of doing that, people were like, hey, you're the box guy, that's great! And they'd walk over and get pictures with me and shit, because... Well, it's the thing, I never stopped having fun with it, because if people were like, no, you're fucking stupid, get out of my convention, I'd be like, nope, can't make me, motherfucker, yeah! And I'd like, walk backwards like, oh, you can't see me flip you off, because I got box hands, what? <laughs> <laughs> can't stop me now, <laughs> and I'd waddle away. Uh, <laughs> and that's the thing, I had fun every step of the way. 
that will bleed into the people that are observing you and consuming your content in one way or another. So even if it's crap, if you're having fun, just like Tobuscus, if you're having fun while you're doing it, then people will love it. If you're excited about it, they will be too. If you have one person watching you on Twitch, you made it. You're good. One person regularly comes in. You're like, oh, I'm a good person. Thanks, Mom. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. Buy prints? That is interesting because none of us are artists. Yeah. Well, well, like, I love buying prints. Like photo prints? Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, photo, like oh, cosplay like photo prints. Okay, uh, I love buying prints. And I will tell you the, how I buy, why I would buy a print. Um, so if, I, if, uh, if you say hi to me and like, you like my costume, I immediately come over to your booth. Um, also, <laughs> so uh, a lot of the times I'm looking for something specific too. I have this thing where every costume, every costume that I do, I buy a print of it because I want to support an artist who likes a character that I like. Um, so I always do that, and then I will go post it um, like on my Instagram or something like that. Like, hey, I cosplayed this. You can check out my photos, and you can check out this art by this cool person that I found in the artist alley. Um, so I will just, I mean, if I like your cool, I like different art styles like I'm crazy about it so if you have a really weird art style I'm going to be attracted to you if you have a really uh, you know like gen not, I won't say generic that's bad um, but uh, if you you know depending on what your art style is like I'll see it but um, if you're like if you're cool if you're nice if it's a if it's something that I want to see I'm going to buy it um, a lot of the times just your setup too, the way you present the art um, if you have a way that people maybe someone doesn't want to necessarily buy it like at the same time, if you have a card or a page or a DeviantArt or an Etsy shop or something like that where you have uh, your stuff up, people can kind of get exposed to that. If uh, before a convention you want to post in, in some tags on Tumblr or stuff that you're going to be there, maybe show some previews of your prints, people might get hyped about it. So that's the thing too, it's kind of just the way that you market everything. Yeah, sorry. Oh, go ahead, yeah. yeah. Also, like, also with like cosplay photos, like, cause I, I, I advertise mine like a mm -hmm. bunch of times. Like, I'm just people are like, yeah, I'm gonna buy them, and I'm like. Yeah, some people be like, yo, I'm totally gonna buy this and just won't. They just won't. You just can't you can't get it you can't get into well, that. I don't know. I mean I <laughs> I've, uh, I got to the point where I was eventually guesting at conventions, and I had some nice photos that some people had taken of me over the years. I decided to print them and put them on a table and was like, would you like to pay me money for this picture of me? I will put my name on it. <laughs> and a few people said yes. <laughs> That's about the best I got. <laughs> um, something I, I want to say, uh, wanted to say earlier about, um, with, uh, your question, with, uh, putting up stuff that might not exactly be finished, but you want to test the waters. Uh, well, and it's, it's, it's more stuff that isn't necessarily um, to test as much as yeah. you're, you're doing something that doesn't have your own face on it. Oh, okay, so like audio stuff. Like, audio or visual, but you did it in like like a, like a painting or something like painting, that. Like, yeah. Uh, like speed, like digital like painting. Casting stuff, that sort of stuff. Oh, okay. But, I mean, if you have something to say about uh, quickly, uh, people who do pro like props. If you're a prop maker, if you commission props and stuff like that, um, if you uh, if you want to kind of get your work out there, a lot of the times it's cool to hook up with a cosplayer who might want to use your prop, um, and then they can you know they'll credit you in their photos and stuff, and then other people can kind of see your work that way. So if you are not the face behind what you are doing, if you have if you make badass swords, find a cloud and give them your sword. You know. Now, like, how many people here have heard of featherweight? Devin Harrington, raise a hand. This is a man who has made his career making interesting and awesome props for other cosplayers. Because if I'm like, yeah, I want to play this mad scientist guy, but I need like a huge ray gun or something like that, or I need my minions to have these really cool metal helmets and like ray guns that they carry around, like, can you do that? And he goes, yeah, sure. And you pay him money, and he makes you these really awesome props, and he, he builds them to last. Yeah. And they're great. And then people show up to this costume and they go, oh my god, this is a really awesome costume. I love that crazy sword you've got. And they go, yeah, it was made by this guy named Featherweight. Um, he's like some kind of weird gremlin. Uh, <laughs> he lives in Burlington. He's a cardboard smith of, like, biblical proportions. I don't know how to describe him. but um, And they're like, cool. And then his contact information got passed around to different people to the point where, like, random people at conventions just know about him. Only a hand of pe handful of people actually know what he looks like. Um, and he used to, like, he did, like, one or two costumes back when he got started to, like, get his name started. And it's almost entirely been word of mouth at this point.
just made like collabing with really cool people because he had a niche and he's hitting that. You just niche whisper really hard. his name and he appears. <laughs> if you put down some cardboard in the pile with some hot glue guns and stuff and you and you say his name three times, he shows up behind just real scared. <laughs> <laughs> it disappears and goes to Burlington. <laughs> um, all right, like um, I do want to get this point out because I was thinking about it the whole time. Like Matt keeps stealing my mic. I'll just wait. <laughs> um, no, but about um, starting stuff in progress, that can actually be a good thing. Like, it's, sometimes people will slam me because they're like, oh, I don't care about this until it's finished, or like, whatever. Um, Dragon Ball, there was a Dragon Ball fan film that came out recently, and it was uh, Hero Time or something like that. It was, it was kind of based off the trunk stuff. And they put out this thing, like, I think it was like four or five years ago. And it was just like this little demo they did where they're like, look, we can do Dragon Ball fights in real life now. And everyone's like, cool. They got enough attention from that that they actually are building an entire series based on what happened with Trunks and Gohan back in like the other timeline. That is awesome. Like, and they're getting paid by fans to do it. Like, Patreon's a whole thing. It, it's a big the Kickstarter, all that stuff. You can show off like a demo of something and get people excited enough to see the rest of it. They might not like it when it's done because it might not be what you promised. But if it is, then they're gonna love it. Well. And also, it's good for the creator to do something like that, because if you're like, hey, so I'm like halfway through this project, what do you guys think? And everybody goes, yeah, that's really awesome. You go, great, so now you've seen that I'm halfway through this project, and now I have to finish it. Exactly. <laughs> it forces you. <laughs> if I don't finish it now, I just look like a boob. <laughs> but that's a, that's a thing that I can tell you as a, a creator of things, in really anything, like if it's writing a book, if it's making a movie, making a costume, don't tell people about it. Show them. If they're like, yeah, I've got this really cool idea for a book, my next response to anybody who starts saying that is, shut up, don't tell me. Write it. And then I'll read your book. Because like all that energy that you have that you want to express and tell people about this really awesome, cool idea you have, don't. Take that energy and put it into making the thing. <laughs> or at least getting it started and then be like, look at this thing I started. And they go, damn, that's a real thing now. Great, keep at it. And then you'll finish it. Because if you just sit around, it's really easy to sit around and talk about a cool idea and never do it. Yeah. Like, that was one of my biggest problems. Like, I started YouTube back in 2006 when I was a child. Like, because I was making, uh, I saw Lord of the Rings when I was, like, really young. And I was like, I want to do that. And my dad's like, fight monsters? And I'm like, no, make movies. And he's like, I prefer if you fought monsters. <laughs> so, yeah, like, it's... <laughs> what? <laughs> you sure you don't like fighting goblins? Something's a little more realistic. <laughs> well, no, like, yeah, my, like, my parents are, like, working class, so they're like, MAKING MOVIES! <laughs> like, that's not a thing. And, you know, my, my dad was a marine biologist, and I was like, I think I want to be a scientist when I grow up. And he was like, no, son, don't be a scientist, you won't get paid anything. And I go, cool, I want to be a filmmaker. And he goes, please, oh, God. <laughs> Be a scientist. <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> like, try explaining, like, oh, I want to go, like, for a long time, I'm like, I want to go to BC and I want to study film. My parents are like, that's a dumb idea. And I'm like, you know what? I kind of don't want, like, I took television broadcasting in Mohawk and I was like, they're like, good, there's a career in that. And I'm like, cool, I don't like this. This is really restrictive. And then I was like, I'm going to do YouTube instead. Try explaining YouTube to people who don't want you to do film. Like, that <laughs> is not going to fly. Um, but the, uh, with blah, sidetracking super hard to back to um, like don't talk about the thing you want to do, just do it. I would I wanted to do like re like a review show forever, and I kept saying I was gonna do it, and I kept saying I was gonna do it, and I never did it. And then I did it, and then I hated it. Sometimes you're not. Sometimes the thing you want to do isn't really gonna go according to plan, and you should be prepared for that. It's not a failure, it's you tried it and it didn't work. And it's just, you just have to keep working and find what you want to do. Because if you still like making video, then find something else to do. Like, I'm more happy now making YouTube than I ever have been since that time. Like, I stopped doing reviews and I started just talking about fandom stuff. Like, how much I want to see Miles Morales and Spider-Man and stuff like that. And it's way more fun. Like, do, you have to have fun with this, otherwise there's no point in doing it. And that's like absolutely key. That guy totally agrees. <laughs> yes, good. I like that guy. Not the rest of you, though. No, the rest of you, just yeah. that one guy. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. 
uh, it's kind of the same with the costumes that you're going to do a lot of the times. Uh, sometimes you're working on a costume and you're like, wow, that's this poop. And uh, you just, you don't finish it. But it's not, a, you know, it's not about that. It's about like moving on to the next one, whatever cons are coming up, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, people are still going to be excited about the next thing that you do. So don't worry. Doc, you were going to say Well, I mean, I, I kind of already uh, touched on that, but it does really ring true the same with like making videos and a lot of the props and stuff that I do. Like, I get really excited talking about the props that I'm making. Um, especially like the new suits of armor and stuff like that that I'm going to be doing a lot of the features that I'm going to be having in the next Mechanolith suit so I'm like crazy excited about that it's really hard for me not to bring that up every time someone's like didn't you have a suit of armor didn't that thing break on you and I go yep and they're like you gonna make a new one I'm like yep yeah I am they're like oh what's it gonna be like I can't tell you mm. Mechanolith is probably my favorite thing on the planet <laughs> well it's the thing Featherweight helped me build that suit uh, the two of us sat down and designed that. Um, I did a lot of the grunt work, cutting some stuff out. He did all of, like, here's the thing. This guy uh, has, like, cri crippling dyslexia to the point where when we were first talking on MSN, this was back in the day on MSN, um, I was like, hey, you know, I'd like to do some projects with you. You seem like a really cool guy. And then he was typing back to me, and I'm like, are you typing with your face? What's wrong? Are you drunk? And he's just like, no, I have really bad dyslexia. I'm like, I'm an asshole. Okay. Uh, <laughs> God, glad we got that out in the open, sweet. Um, and this guy didn't measure one angle on the entire suit. He just eyeballed the whole damn thing, and it's impeccable. If you have a picture of it or something like that, or like, it's the, it's one of the top viewed videos on my channel, is Last Stand of the Mechanolith. And that's not even the full suit, it was like, we took the suit out to one con uh, at Fan Expo and it was phenomenal. But I didn't build the ventilation system into it, so like I had this bubble on over top of my head that would fog up and asphyxiate me every five seconds. So uh, that was fun. And then we got the fans in, and I took it to another con, and it fell apart because it was like it was cardboard and hot glue, and it was layers of cardboard and hot glue, and it was all lacquered and everything on the outside. It weighed a metric ton, and but started to come apart over time because cardboard is just recycled paper. It starts to disintegrate after a few years. So we did the best with it, we shot a video, and it was done. But like that entire suit that we had was one of the largest achievements that we've ever done on this channel. And this guy just sat down and was like, yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna do the front of the suit now, which is all these like angular bits to make like the whole chest piece. He's like, yeah, okay, I'm just, uh, mm -hmm, okay, yeah, yeah, that works, all right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he just does this whole thing, and I'm just sitting there flabbergasted the whole time. Blew me away. Um, but it's really hard not to talk about all the awesome other things I'm going to be doing with the same kind of idea. Yeah. Like, I don't even know how to follow that up, because now I'm just like, dude, follow, like, the Mechanolith fight was like the coolest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it was a huge undertaking. Yeah. And that was back when I had a job that I was being paid enough that I could have a lot of time off, and I had a lot of money to throw around at things like getting all the parts for the suit. It was so expensive to build. Like, the suit at the end of the day almost cost me $500 in materials. And that was like, and this guy, I, we, we, didn't, we didn't get paid, like either of us, like, because we were building this project together. No one was paying anybody. I just brought him all the materials, and he was like, we're going to build a thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was just days of me out in Bradford uh, with him and his, like, in his random bungalow, just like cardboard cutting all this stuff together. Um, and then I did all the wiring and the paintwork for it, and it was crazy awesome, but it just, it weighed so damn much. <laughs> uh, I missed that suit. <laughs> we all do. Uh, so, uh, out of curiosity, how many of you already have a YouTube channel? Oh, yeah. Or a cosplay page, yeah. whichever. Like, you already have started. Okay, a lot more of you than I thought. Uh, okay, how many of you have done a collab before? Because that's actually really important. You have? Okay. Are you afraid to ask, or do you just not? Sh are you just not sure what you want to collab on? Because both of those are legitimate problems. Uh, I was terrified to, I'm like terrified to ask any other YouTuber or like, uh, cosplayer or anything. I know her in real life and I was afraid to ask her to join me on this panel. I look up to Dr. Holocaust and I had to ask him and I was like, uh, do you want to do this thing with me? Like, and we did this panel once before and it ended in like a riot. Don't riot. <laughs> League of Legends kids are fierce. Oh, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> no, down. <laughs> um, so, 
But you know what? Sometimes you just gotta go out on a limb and ask. Like, I asked, they're here. I did a collab with uh, a buddy of mine called Sage Furry Otaku, and she's awesome. And I had, like, I'm, she has like a thousand, and she's still growing, and she's nonstop. And I was like, there's no way she's gonna say yes. And then she said yes. <laughs> like, so I was like, sometimes if you just ask, and they check out your channel and they like what they see, like they can see you love doing what, because again, like you said, if you love it, it's gonna show. So if they see that, they know your passion. Thanks, sir. Okay, I know this isn't related to anything you guys do, but if you're just no. worth a shot to ask anyway, just in case you think of anything that could possibly help me, is we like, will try. I make indie games, and I was wondering if you had any advice for how to promote music games. Um, here's the, here's the thing. Promoting any product that you're making, um, be it a television series, a comic, a game, or something like that, you want to work on what they call a pitch. A pitch is a single sentence, no commas. And you want to relate your product to something that worked. Like somebody was like, uh, tell me about Firefly. What's Firefly? Space Cowboys. That's, that's, that's your pitch though. And people were like, eh. it's not really like, it's not hugely relatable, but then some other people will be like, yeah, I'm making this thing. It's like Sin City and Ninja Turtles. And someone's like, shit, I like Sin City. Ninja Turtles was really cool. Tell me more about that. Or they'll be like, yeah, I want to go see that. Like, that's a pitch. And I took a comic writing course with Ty Templeton. The guy's, like, insane. But, <laughs> but that was one of the things he helped us work on. He's like, He was like, pitch me Dr. Holocaust. What's Dr. Holocaust to you? And I was like, this Dr. Holocaust is the nicest villain in the world. That's your one-sentence quick pitch for this character. He's the world's nicest supervillain. And that's the thing. He goes... Okay, I'm hooked. Tell me more. And then you can go more on top of that. If you have an indie game that you're like, yeah, it's like, um, I don't know, uh, Super Mario mixed with Portal or something like that, because somebody made one of those kinds of games. If you pitch that to somebody, yeah, it's, like, it's Super Mario mixed with Portal. Sweet, I want to check that out. Like, work on that. <laughs> relate to things that were successful as well. If you, can, if you can relate it to two things that were successful and say it's like this with this, then... You can sell just about anybody on anything. Or just using this mission. Like, uh, my game that I'm working on is a visual novel RPG that may never end. Oh. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, um, if, if you have a, a version of your game that people can play, it's super cool to like get uh, people in to like, be beta testers. Um, right up in the front row over here is a wonderful girl named Allie, and her boyfriend downstairs uh, has a booth in the dealer's room, Sipco Games. And it basically just started out as we would hang out in his basement and uh, play the game that he made. <laughs> and play the game that he made. And I like he was just like, oh, it's like a like a fantasy RPG type thing. I'm like, yeah, what? Yes, I'll play. So I would play. The, I I played this game, and I think the first time I played his game, I <laughs> I just like I was raging. I was like, how do I go to a store? How do I do this? And it was just it was a good time. So if you have a version of the game that people can play, or you know, if someone, I mean, once they, if your pitch matches up with people's experience of the game, that'll be you know. You can get that going. No, and, and here's the thing. Um, you can get your pitch from the people you let play test your game. Because they can play it and then say it was like A mixed with B. And you're like, awesome, I'll use that when I'm telling other people about it. You can also find people that are in the community of games and let them test it out. Like, for example, the fourth and final installment of Five Nights at Freddy's just came out. Markiplier got an early access to it and is now doing videos for it. Um, that wasn't an accident. The guy obviously went like, great, so Markiplier got crazy popular doing Five Nights at Freddy's. Everybody knows that he's the guy to go to for Five Nights at Freddy's stuff. I've got my final installment to my game that I want people to be really excited about. I'm just going to hand that over to you right here so you can just play that. Um, and he does all the PR for him at that point. Um, good or bad, Markiplier is playing this game and talking about it and having a great time. That's a really good way to do that. And it circles back around to collaborating with other uh, people. If I can just, met, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ramble real quick. <laughs> right. um, when I first got started doing this, um, I was trying to do this as a comic. I was dressing up as this character, going to conventions to try to drum up uh, an artist, basically. Going like up to an artist, going like, I wanna write a comic about this guy. Uh, <laughs> To make it easy, and then, like and then, the yeah, the, just <laughs> real quick, easy pitch. And I started running into these other really interesting personalities, like the Savage Bandito, Ninja with a Soul Patch, and a couple of other people. And they asked me at random, "Can we just do a collaborative video for shit? 
can we just have some fun and throw a video together just for kicks? And I was like, absolutely. I got time, why not? And those are still some of the most viewed videos that I've got on my channel. And just don't be afraid to ask people to, to work with you on projects. Like, I've had people from Channel Awesome be like, hi, you're not doing anything, I imagine. Do you want to come and do, like, a video with us? Can you send us footage and we can include it in some of our stuff? Sure. I watched Ninja with a Soul Patch. Has absolutely no online presence whatsoever. Some people know him from cons. Some people. Um, but he asks big name people, triple A high list folks, like, can I be in one of your projects? Or can you send me some small amounts of content, like some video footage or something like that, that I could put in one of my videos or something? And they say, uh, sure. Most of these people got nothing to lose. Being with, like, new creators and stuff like that, because it makes them look good being in someone else's, like, content who's not really big. And it makes the person's, like, you know, not-so-big content look fantastic because they've got big-name people and everybody wins here. I love being on these panels and talking about this stuff because we did a panel before and it ended really exciting. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's, if you, you don't really have anything to lose if you ask someone bigger than you for help or to include you in their projects or if you can include them in your projects. What's that, man? Going back to the uh, whole A mixed with B uh, conversation. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm working on a book series that's Lord of the Rings with dinosaurs. You have it. My issue is here. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, that tickles me. <laughs> and the uh, issue comes up with uh, going on about it after you got them hooked. Because, because uh, novels are a narrative experience, and yep. I'm always worried about if I tell them too much about my book, it may spoil the story for me. So how... What's that I, thing that's on the back of the book? What do you call that? Um, description. There you go. Because yeah. uh, the pitch hooks them. Once they're hooked, you give them the description. The description is very tastefully written out, and you want to memorize the description of your product. Yeah. And that is, this is a story about so-and-so who did this and this, these things, and maybe they'll find along and get true love or something, and maybe he'll defeat the dark wizard. We didn't find out. Because um, you want to end with a cliffhanger. You don't want to reveal too many things about it. You want to continue to interest the reader in getting then the full product after that point because you got your hook, which is A related to B, and then you can do your description. But, like, again, read the description on the back of any book. What does it tell you? It tells you the general setting, the characters, and their motivations. That's it. It doesn't tell you anything about how it gets resolved and or any of the particular action. It sets a stage for action saying that some of these things might happen. There could be an invasion from aliens, we don't know. The aliens that invade could be dolphin ghosts from the past, we have no oh, idea. Um, that's an actual book that I have at my table. Um, and I may do my first, last, and only book review on this atrocity. But the description is intended to give a person a broader range on what your product is, but still continue to hook them. Never satisfy your reader until they've read the book. Uh, yeah, your first draft of your summary de you know, doesn't have to be your last draft. <laughs> so you can change things. It's okay. Uh, so yeah, just, you know. Well, I was, was going to say, like, I don't write books, so I'm trying to relate. Uh, the most I can relate to is... Uh, this one tried to make, make me read, uh, how many of you guys here like Maximum Ride? Okay, I'm gonna make it real bad in a second. Uh, <laughs> so, this one tried to get me to read Maximum Ride, and I was like, I have no idea what that is, it sounds weird. And you're like, it's people with bird powers. And I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. It's, it's like, it's people with bird powers and wings, and one of them's blind, and they go on this crazy adventure, and there's a manga. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll read the manga. No, um, no so I read the book, and I got real bored. But the pitch, was really good. It made you want to read the book. Even if it's boring, you still went out and... Freaky bird people. Freaky bird people! Like, you still went out and you picked it up. Like, a pitch can make you pick up anything. Like, it just depends on how well you sell it. And therein lies, lies like, the true key to getting your smaller indie comment or content available anywhere online. And that is, you have to know how to sell yourself. Yep. Um, because that's the thing. Like, if you enjoy making your content, that's great. Larda Susan would say this all the time. If you really like making your content and no one's gonna watch it and you're happy with that, then fine. Don't complain when no one watches your content. If you want people to watch your content, then not only are you gonna have to enjoy this while you're doing it, you have to work your ass off and you're going to have to sell yourself to people. 
Like, uh, shit, the guys at Underworld LARP just bought their own property up in the middle of, like, Leslieville or something like that, and then McDonald's approached them and was like, we want to do a commercial with you guys. We want to have a whole bunch of your players on a commercial for us for our new McFlurry truck. And some people are going, oh, sellouts, and they're going, fuck yeah. <laughs> That's a pile of money and a bunch of free advertisement with McDonald's. Shit yeah, I'm going to do that. If McDonald's approached me tomorrow and said, we want to do a commercial starring your character, I'd be like, yes. I don't care. Like, it gives me, what, 30 seconds I'm on television with one of the world's largest corporations selling my character. I can't ask for more than that. And people th think that you're a sellout, it doesn't matter. You're still enjoying making your content, and if they're gonna give you a boost, which is a huge amount of money and viewership, then that's great. Biggest complaint I used to get back when I was making videos was your videos are great, but no one watches them. Because I have no idea how to sell myself. I don't know how to market. <laughs> I just keep hitting this one drum called conventions. <laughs> yeah, uh, over eight in years. <laughs> in terms of cosplay stuff too, I mean, you can be walking through a con and someone can be like, oh, can I have a photo? And you can be like, sure. That photo could blow up. There was a, a selfie, okay? An infamous selfie that uh, a friend of me and my friend, we took it. Uh, the Ironettes from the oh. second Iron Man show show movie anyway uh we took a selfie of a just a really funny selfie of us in my bedroom uh on our way to go see the first avengers um three years later a friend of my mom <laughs> found this photo as a meme it was one of those like motivational poster things and it was like oh hot cosplay girls and then it's like they're doing it right or whatever and it was just like this hilarious photo of us so we <laughs> yes it happened <laughs> And uh, it was just like... I know like, this meme. Yeah. I know you know this meme. Yeah. I'm in, that's me, I'm in that meme. This meme. This meme. <laughs> this is me. I had no idea it was a meme. And then I found out I was a meme. So, I mean, literally anything can give you the potential to, I mean, get your stuff out there. It was a selfie. And then it was a meme. It wasn't doing it right. It was hot, like cosplay girls weirdly attractive. Yeah. And all yeah. our friends were like, weirdly? <laughs> Extreme. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that makes no sense. I, keep, I just keep throwing this wedding ring at the screen. Nothing's happening. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the. There was, it was like, I guess it was reposted onto a bunch of different websites. So I have no idea the, the total of how many views it got or anything like that. But I mean, we ended up getting like no recognition from it because it was a selfie in my bedroom and that sort of thing. And we didn't have our cosplay t names attached with it or anything like that. So when we found it later, we were like, this is us. And, um, but the one website that I seen on was like, oh my God, funny or something like that. Like it's one of those dumb websites that you click on, they have like stupid, you know, photos and stuff. And it had about like 3 million likes on it. <laughs> it was something like that. And it had about 3 million views, 3 million, 3 million likes on it and stuff. And I had just seen it and I was like, what? That's my bedroom? Like it was intense. Um, like latching onto uh, what Doc said too about like, you kind of have to sell yourself. I've, like I said, I've been doing this since I was a kid, like 2006, so that's a long time, and you would have thought like, oh, in that time you would have gotten a bunch of subscribers. Don't be an idiot and jump channels, I can tell you that right now, because you'll lose your fan base, and I've lost them four times. Like, so, <laughs> Theming's also really handy. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, being consistent, and on top of that, this is the first year I've ever made business cards in my life, and I was like, holy crap, so helpful. Like, no, it's, it, well, I mean, that was the thing. When I first got doing this, uh, people were like, yeah, what you should do is make a business card that's got your name, it's got your, your, your moniker and your website and stuff like that, and, and I was like, no. I'm going to make a card that's just got Toronto's Greatest Spill and Dr. Holocaust and then a website at the bottom. Because I'm not selling myself, I'm selling the character. Um, and if you're Toronto Iron Man or something like that, then if that's all that you're going to be doing as a cosplayer, like just more Iron Man stuff, because more Iron Man stuff's going to keep coming out, then do that. Like, continue being Toronto Iron Man. You might want to do a few things on the side, but like, that's mainly his, his shtick. If you're going to be a cosplayer, that gives you a lot of open space to do a lot of different things. Like, I can't openly cosplay a lot of different characters because I'm not the center of my thing, my character is. So I have to keep doing different versions of this supervillain. Um, and the theming is really important, especially when you're doing a channel. Like, I've tried a, different, a, a couple of different things with the videos that I'm making because I'm not sure yet where I really want to land. Because there's like, I could make videos where I'm playing games, do like Let's Plays and stuff like that. Those are a huge amount of fun to do, but they're a surprising amount of work. <laughs> 
I could do vlogs talking about political stuff. I could do vlogs talking about, uh, you know, movies and games that are coming out. I could do vlogs talking about the latest advancements in science. And I've done vlogs talking about all of those things. And the only core viewers that I've got currently on my channels are people that are opinion lovers. And that is, this show is not a show about games, it's not a show about movies, or political stuff, or science. It is a show about a villain's opinion on these things. And that's the people that watch my stuff. That is the theming that I'm stuck to at this point, at all times. No matter what it is that I'm talking about, it is the character that is speaking about these things, and that needs to be apparent. If you are a cosplayer, and all of your cosplay stuff is going to be on your thing, if you have a theme like specifically just Spider-Man stuff, then then just make sure that it sticks around that area so the people that come for the Spider-Man stuff get to stay for the Spider-Man stuff. I've seen people switch from like, yeah, I'm doing a gaming channel right now, but now I want to start doing videos about making uh, cheap props in the backyard, backyard effects. So, uh... Great, but all the people that know you for your gaming and stuff like that have nothing to watch now. Because they're not here for that. Or when they were doing backyard effects, and yeah, we're not going to do this anymore, we're going to start doing uh, like high Hollywood effects now. Okay, but all the small-time filmmakers that are subscribed to your channel they got nothing to watch now. Unsubscribe. And they lost like all of their subscription base because they jump ship, they move around. That, uh, I'm gonna get to you, man, but I, I promised. Okay, I saw you a while ago. Uh, I got it, I, I actually, like about what Doc said, I, like I said, I did Anime Minute, which was like one minute anime reviews for every single anime that came out each season. That sucks. Like, it's, it, it was fun, because I like anime. It sucked because it was a crap ton of work and I lost interest in making videos in general. Like, it literally just burnt me out. Yeah. So, I ended up having to make this decision where, and sometimes you'll get to this point where you just don't like doing it. And if at any point this turns into work, like, this is work. It, it is. But if it turns into a job that you don't like anymore, then it's not, it stopped being your hobby that pays yeah. really well. I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm getting into this. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys the same thing that I'd like. There was a very similar panel about this kind of stuff yesterday. Um, and I'll tell you the same thing that I told the audience there. If you think for a moment when you want to make it online and you're going to be doing the thing that you love, that this isn't going to be a huge amount of work and this isn't going to grind your ass into the dirt, you're fucking wrong. I'm sorry. Like, if, if even like, Jesus, talk to any of the people that are on Channel Awesome. All of them started making their videos when they were in their mother's basements. Working like overnights at Taco Bell and then making their videos between uh, 5 a.m. and noon this Because that was the only time they could do it and that was the thing like it's It's a huge amount of work, but you have to do it because you love it If it's something that you're like kind of interested in then don't like you do it at your own pace But don't expect to like you know blow up and get crazy famous on it if you want it to become something that is a career like because I'm so crazy close to this being my full-time job um, it is going to be a huge amount of work. I've been working my ass off on this stuff until I've been crazy sick for the last four to six years. And I'm only at this point. <laughs> so, like, if I get lucky and one of the videos goes viral, that's great. One of the ways that you can sort of shift a lot of the burden off yourself is get people to help you. I can't do special effects on my videos. Or at the very least, it, it, I could, but it would take me for freaking ever. Like, I could learn to sew. But it would take me a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of effort that I don't have. So I had people like my Cherie make me this coat. I could learn how to do really fancy special effects through After Effects and other programs like that. But it would take me a lot of time and money and effort that I don't have. So Dan the Video Ninja, one of the guys that does a lot of the video work for this con, does my special effects for me. If I have a video that's got a lot of shooting lightning lasers from space blowing up someone's car or something like that, I go to him. Yeah, like... Sorry, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, go ahead, man. I was basically just asking because you started talking about how, how it's a bad idea to make a second channel, like the whole idea of how to transition from something you might not be as interested in to something that you enjoy. And I feel like all oh, this is kind of relevant. Yeah, I actually totally agree. Because the thing is, with my channel, like what Doc said is absolutely true. Like, I. Like, just like, I had, I was working, and every time I wasn't working, I was doing videos. And if I wasn't doing videos, I was working. Like, you do that consistently. It's like all your time. It, it is literally all your time. But, and it's weird because, it, like, there's days where you're like, I hate this, I hate this, and other, but, and you want to quit, but then you're like, but I kind of like it. 
Like, <laughs> so you're like, I, you well, kind of can't stop. Some days are better than others. Yeah. There will be bad days when you're doing this stuff. Like, geez, when I was doing videos for this or a, a couple of promo videos last month, I was like, I just got off an 11 hour shift at the factory that I'm working at. I don't want to sit down right now and work another six hours on a video. Tough. Sit down and do it. It's your job right now. And you'll love it later. And I know that I'll love it later because I'm going to stamp my feet and kick in my nose eh, like a kid because I don't want to do it right now. But too bad because when I'm done, then the video is going to go up a bunch. People are going to view it and say that's really awesome. That video is going to be used as promo material for some other kind of thing that I'm working with. Like it's not the stuff that I love making, but it's advantageous to me and it's a part of the content that I enjoy creating. And it'll go somewhere. So you gotta like, you gotta drag your feet to the mud. It's rough, yeah. but the work pays off. Now for cosplayers, you don't ever want to skip a con just because you're not done your costume or because you don't have something new. Um, because I mean, you can always take time off the con. You know, the Friday night or the Thursday night, you can go ahead and finish it, whatever. But you don't want to be like, oh, I'm not attending. You know, it's because this is where your work is going to get shown. And uh, you know, sometimes yes, you procrastinate and it sucks. But it's not cosplay unless it's 3 a.m. and you're dehydrated and you're working on a costume. You know, it, that's not what it. It's not that. No. So, I mean, but you never want to be, you never want to rage quit a convention just because, you know, that's going on. So you have to sit down and you have to finish. Yeah. I've been wearing this coat for four years. Yeah. Like, that's great. thank you. All right. um, yeah, like, the only thing I would add to that, and I'm, I'm going to circle back to the second channel thing, is if you lose passion for it, then don't do it. Like, if yeah. it's the, if, if you, like, that's what, and sometimes A lot of times you try stuff, and you'll be like, yeah, I really like doing this thing, and then you'll do it, and then it turns out after a while of doing it, you're like, you know, I actually don't like doing this. Yeah. That's okay. That happens to, like, everyone. It's okay to stop what you're doing and be like, you know what, I'm not really super great into this right now, put it down, and be like, I'm not going to do this anymore. If you need to rest for your health, do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, like... I'm assuming people here watch Doc stuff. Veda kills it. Like, I like, like three people. Three people. No, but like, Vita, where there's a challenge every year called Vlog Every Day April, um, which is V E D A Vita. Uh, and you literally, and you can't cheat, you have to sit down and make a vlog every single day for the month of April. Yeah. And it murders me at the end of the month. Like, because I get down, you can see it every year. I've done like three years in a row now. Every year it gets down to like the last three days, and I'm like, hey, everybody, welcome to Vita. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? All right, so uh, we got about five minutes left. So I want to tell a quick story uh, that you might find interesting. So about three years ago at Con Bravo, I cosplayed Launch from Dragon Ball. And it was a good time. And uh, I love Dragon Ball, so I was like, yes, like, it was amazing. Um, and last year, we are getting hyped up, and I'm hanging out with this one, and he tells me that one of my cosplay photos is in his video. Oh, shit, I remember that. That's right. You were talking about coming over to Con Bravo, and you were like, hey, I'm going to this con. And we, I watched this video, and my costume, a photo of my costume from the year before, was in his video. And I was like, no way. Now I'm sitting beside him. On a panel. One big happy online. So family. I mean, it took three years, but it happened. <laughs> so I mean, sometimes you will. It'll take a while, but it'll all come full circle. Ah, so, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so you do really good work, though. Honestly, yeah. like I wouldn't feature your stuff if it wasn't awesome. <laughs> like, there was another girl who was supposed to. I guess we're all just going to tell stories about Doc now because there's another <laughs> girl who was supposed to be here. Uh, she, she's working. She did this really awesome young... Do you guys remember Young Justice? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Best show ever. Uh, anyway, so... It was a good show. It was. It was a really good show, and I got canceled for no reason. Um, I blame Legend of Korra. Uh, so, I'm saying... Also a good show. Exactly. They got canceled for Legend of Korra. So, uh, our friend, uh, Allie made these really solid, like, all herself, basically the entire team. And we were running around Fan Expo as Young Justice. We have, like, people here who were actually, like... A part of the, the group. And I'm running around as Kid Flash with red, like I dyed my hair red. And I bump into this dude who I didn't recognize right away, but he looked like a mad scientist. And at first I thought he was Dr. Horrible. So I was like, Everybody thought that. Exactly. So I was like, who is this? And then it was Doc, and he gave me his, his card. And I was just like, 
I have a man crush on this guy now, and he thinks that I'm Kid Flash, and he'll never recognize me again because I have his black hair. That's the thing. In order to maintain sanity, um, after every con, I dump all my memory from everything that happened at the con. I meet like millions of people that are here like, oh, hey, what's going on? Oh, hi. I shake hands. I say hi to people and everything like that, but I've got a shit memory. <laughs> so at the end of every convention, I'm just like, oh, that was great. Cool. Get home. Hang out my lab coat. Put my stuff away. And delete. Sweet. I'm going to go play some Dark Souls. Uh, <laughs> it's like, you know, like, I've got pictures of a bunch of stuff that happened, and I will literally go through pictures and be like, when did this happen? This person was really cool. When did I? Oh, that's neat. <laughs> like... Like, I won't, and that just, it just helps me sort of keep myself together uh, when it comes to that stuff. Can I tell the story about the last time we did this panel at Anime North? Because you sent me the email, you're like, great, no ball players. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm like, please no people that play League of Legends. No, because last year we had like seven speakers. It was me and this guy here, and then five, oh no, shit, then it must have been like a different yeah. panel. Yeah, because he sent me that, and I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm going to pretend like I do. Okay, no, so then, no, I must, I might, no, because this was like, this was years ago, I might have you confused with another person. There were five people on that panel that played League of Legends. I've been talking. Um, and we're like, okay, so we're here to talk about making videos on YouTube. And these five people were like, yeah, it's super easy, you just make videos and you get tons of viewers and money, it's, it's, eh, it's no big deal. And I was like, you guys are fucking insane. You have no idea that you've got on board with a game that happened to get popular on the ground level, and three of you only get views because you're cute. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna be an asshole and say that right now, but like watching their content, I'm like, they have a camera that's like, this is the view of their game, and then they have another camera right here. And I'm like, really? I can't even see your face on your webcam. That's insane. And all the people like, like what, what, what's your major demographic of people that play LOL? Team boys. Great, so they're gonna watch videos of people playing that with boobs in the corner. Awesome. And I'm like, all right. They don't know how lucky they got. And then at the very end, because this is a room packed with people, because these people have apparently like a huge amount of viewers. I had like three fans in the front row. <laughs> um, and at the very end, they were like, all right, so we know the gamer tags for like you guys here, but what about the rest of you? What's your names online so we can like play with you and stuff like that? And this guy's like, yeah, I'm like new Poner 157. Yeah, like, oh, I'm this and this. And then it comes to this guy, and he's like, I don't play League, I'm really sorry. Um, and he, he slides the microphone over to me. <laughs> and I just lean in and I'm just like, I like League of Legends better when it was called Dota. And I like Dota better when it was called Warcraft 3. And everybody was about like, Aah! and a guy threw his water bottle at me and it like missed and smashed against the wall and people started throwing chairs and screaming. And I was like, I didn't play these games, you guys suck! And I just left. <laughs> I've never played that game and I hate it to bits. Yeah. Hello? Oh! No, no, no. It was on and I turned it off because it wasn't working. Yeah, I guess. Okay, no, it happened earlier in the thing, it's turned off and on. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're probably gonna get the kick out thing. Last thing I'll say is if you want to do this, you, I can guarantee it's gonna. You're you're gonna fall down sometimes. Like you're gonna stumble, and you're gonna fall down sometimes, and it's gonna suck, and it's gonna be hard. But if you love doing it, it pays for itself, really. So that's all I'll say. And just good luck. Spell check your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if you're posting anything, just spell check it before you post it up. Please read. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, so when I autograph some of my pictures, I will write the same phrase over and over again. Uh, life is a war without end. Never stop fighting. And the reason I write that down is because that is literally how this is for me. Every single day, doing this stuff, life in general, you are fighting uphill. And it's this awful, muddy, messy, grueling shit that you have to dig your way through, and, it's, and it sucks. And... Like, some days you're just, you're so tired and you just want to sit for five minutes and stop fighting, but you can't. Because that's what it is. That's how winners get winning, is you keep fighting. You never stop trying to get the things that you want. And that's what creating your own content, making it somewhere online, that's what that's going to be. It's going to be doing something you love and fighting that until you reach the top of that hill. And it might never come, but it doesn't matter. You get in there every day and you give it everything you've got. 
And that's about all I've got to say.